laser sighted catapults, giveaways, the usual top tips on how to make a brilliant catapult for next to nothing, product reviews, Moochin, our brand new feature, it's Ambrose time, for content, and footage and info from the recent English Slingshot Federation tournament in Cheltenham. What more could you want? This show is packed with stuff. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome to the Catapult Show. We're on the mooch for some you fox. We're about halfway there, we've come a couple of miles into the country. Uh, I was passing this way the other day and I looked down to my right down the hill and I spotted over the back down the hill a good 10 or 15 yew trees. Now, as soon as I seen them, I was like mentally marked it, I've got to go and get them. So I've got my oldest with me today. We've got the saw, we got the bag. We know there's untouched yew trees there, which makes it even better because there could be some cracking forks. So without further ado, let's get there, see if there's any forks. <laughs> as far as we can by car, we've had to park that behind us. We've got about a 200 meter walk down here. Now we can start heading down into where the yew trees are. Just started the descent down. I've seen the yew trees in there. I can see one over there. I can see another one in the back. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's another over there. There's a path that runs through, so we're going to head down now. We're on the descent down. We're about halfway down now. I've already spotted yew trees. Uh, it's looking really good. Like I said, there's nothing as exciting as finding a yew forest where nobody's been before. Um, because you normally get some forks, like there's yew tree, I'm seeing yew trees now. There's a yew tree there, there's one there, there's one for there, there's one there, there's one there, and I can already see in the thick of it, there's loads more. It's a lot bigger than I thought it, and it looks a little woodland, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to come out. Another yew tree, did you hear the pheasant then? <laughs> there's even young yew trees, look at these little young yew trees here, that's actually nice to see. Little young yew trees, really nice to see that but it's thick with it. not come here to chop loads of trees down. I'll take two or three selected forks and uh, that will do me. There's a load of fell yew trees as well like this. So if I can get them off there, even better. Like I said, I've not come here to hack trees down and big branches off and that. Like I said, I actually don't know where this is gonna come out. So you're looking through it with me. <laughs> uh, I brought my Fiskars saw. There's another young tree there. My saw that I had for nine years, which I keep going on about. Me and the lads was on a fishing trip and uh, we were sawing big logs after a load of beers and I snapped the blade. So I've now got me a brand new Fiskars saw. And if it lasts off as long as the other one did, I'll be happy. Right, where are we? Whoop. Where are we? I know the area, but I don't know where this is. Wow, it's beautiful out here. It's almost like a, a cliff face, is it? We'll come back out here soon to do some targets after. I just wanted to look through. Wow, it's beautiful. Beautiful. The only house I can see is that one there, apart from a few houses up over the back. Uh, oh, this place is lovely. It's right on my doorstep pretty much as well. It's only a couple of minutes drive, really. Oh, wow. Well, that's North Wales countryside at its finest, isn't it? Be my dream house, one of them down there with that bit of land. Uh, I've heard pheasants. I've seen loads of squirrels, I've spooked loads of pigeons, but I'm not here for that. Uh, I'm here simply to do a video and get some yew forks. I'm looking now and all up there, that's a massive yew tree, that one, and there. And that one there, look, another massive one. It's much, much bigger than I thought this. First of all, before we go in the woodland and take them yew forks, I'm going to tell you a little about the recent ESF slingshot tournament I was recently at. First of all, I want to say massive, massive thank you to everyone involved setting it up, organising it, anybody involved in any way, it was absolutely brilliant. So, I was supposed to do a video at the event, uh, everything went a little bit tits up, you could say. So this is my story of the recent ESF Slingshot Tournament. I arrived in Cheltenham about 11, half 11 on the morning, went to the hotel, uh, the Premier Inn on the corner, not too far from the shoot. By half past 12, one o'clock, I was having a couple of drinks in the bar. I met some lads, some team members, all the usual squad. Then about three o'clock, I already had a few points. We went and met the Italians and the Czech Republic in the pub, had some food, brilliant. I had a few beers with Pete Hogan, and I was already sozzled by then. But it was great, <laughs> it was brilliant. 
Later on that evening, we was out with Skipman and that. I remember being out all afternoon, all night with Nathan Masters, Moan Walker, uh, Pete Hogan, loads of other people. And it come to early hours in the morning, I remember being sat in this one pub. It was me, Jofie, Nani, Asa Wilson, Nathan Masters. And I remember being in the pub and you flipped a coin. And if you got one the toss, you got two pint jugs of uh, beers. And we was having them round for round. And I remember about two, three o'clock in the morning coming, I don't know. I remember having a bit of a dance and everything. I was, I haven't been that drunk in a long, long time. Anyway, I made a quick exit back to the hotel room. The shoot was the next morning. The next morning comes, I was supposed to be at the shoot for nine, half nine. I got up about half past 10 and felt rotten. The worst I've felt in absolutely ages. Hear that pheasant again then. The other half even said to me, my partner, about four o'clock in the morning, I was trying to walk into the wardrobe. I was opening it and trying to get in it. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, I got to the shoot. Obviously, the other half drove to the shoot. I could hardly see. I had big puffy out eyes. I was sick in the morning. Wouldn't advise it to anybody to get in that state. But I did have a good night. Anyway, I got to the shoot and it was the last round of the 10 meter. I walked in and I said, I'm not shooting. I'm sitting down. And I tried to sit on a chair like that, feeling really rough. Adam Duke and Moan Walker pretty much dragged me to the shooting range and said, listen, it's the last round at a 10 meter, you've got to shoot. I put my catapult in my hand and they give me seven balls, no practice, nothing. And I remember going, <laughs> shot them. And I remember Moan or somebody going, wow, he's got them all in the black because the target was only about that big and the black bit was like that. I don't even know where the balls went. They looked decent, but I don't know. After that, it was the spin around. In between, I sat down feeling sorry for myself. Couldn't even drink water or eat, I was that bad. Sat down for a bit shot at the spinners after I had a little bit of a sit down. Uh, first half was obviously papering the 10 meter second half spinners. I actually fell asleep in the hall where the shoot was going on and I remember being poked or something and Chris Graffin goes, John, you've come second in the 10 meter? Chris Graffin said, I've won it. Chris been winning it. I was like, really? There's, there's 11 countries at this shoot. You had some Chinese, some American, the Spanish, the Germans, the Italians, the Czech Republic, you had top shooters from all over the world here. And I was like, I've come second in the 10 meter. So that buzzed me up a bit and I sat up and it was the 20 meter. And I remember shooting at the 20 meter paper, which again, the old target was only that big. And they all looked on point. And I was told that I had a high paper score for 20 meter. And then I went on to the spinners in the 20 meter and I'm starting to feel better now. I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't as rough as I was in the 10. And I put a really good score in and then I was following the scores then, a little bit anxious and that. And uh, I was winning it all the way. Uh, right at the end, June from Spain put a really, really good score in and he was two points behind me along with John Jeffries. Now this June or Joanne, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, please uh, take my apology. He come third in the Slingshot World Cup in Italy to the two top Chinese shooters he conferred in the world. And I was two points ahead of him, still in first place. So you can imagine how I was feeling then. It was like, come on, we can do it. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up winning the 20 meter. And the winner and this year's 20 meter pro champion is John Wayne. So the two events I done, I come second in the 10 meter and won the 20 meter and this was shooting against 11 different countries. There was the entire Spanish team, the entire Italy team, like I say GZK from China, the Americans uh, and it, it kind of didn't sink in at first. I was like, oh wow, that's good, two trophies and then I realized that was the only two men's events. I've won one and come second in the other. And uh, that pheasant's coming closer. Uh, but anyway, ignore the pheasant. I come second in the other, and it was only on the way home on the motorway when I was driving. I was like, this was a really big event with some real world-class shooters there, and I pulled it off. <laughs> so happy days. You know, maybe it was just my lucky day. And to top it off, I did it with Ferraban Gold, 9.5 millimeter steel, and a big pouch. Right. We'll just leave that there. Let's get back in that forest. 
look for some UFOX. Just on my way back into the forest to find these UFOX, I want to give a shout out to a couple of YouTube channels. Both these channels, I know the people who are running them well, I'd class them both as good friends, I only see them at the shoots and that. But I've known them years and I'd class them as good mates. Putting a lot of time into the YouTube lately. Be sure to check them out, check the videos out, give them a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, it's 90% catapult related, there's some catch and cook and hunting and other stuff. But the channels are based around catapults. Uh, it's Jofi Slingshot Hunting by Jofi himself, he's the one who runs that, I'm sure most of you have heard of him. And the other one is Catapult Carnage by a good friend Chris Graffin. So check them channels out, you know, if you like my content, this type of stuff, what I'm doing, I'm almost certain you'll like theirs. I've just noticed in that sun, look, look who's that side because the camera's flipped. Grey hairs, oh, not good, getting old, but yeah. Check them channels out, both good lads on classes, good friends, brilliant content, and they deserve more views and subscribers, it's simple as that, so check them out. Well, here's the first fork, the V there and the handle down, uh, the camera angle isn't the best, the sun's in the way, but it's actually a decent fork and that's just what I'm after. Exactly what I wanted, look at that, and as I say about the heartwood in you, oh isn't she beautiful. Just found another cracking new fork here. Look at that. That one will be coming home with me. Got it, and what a beauty it is. Beautiful dark grey, and again, look at that. Something about you, what? It's just beautiful. Two new forks down. If I can get one more, that'll be me done. Uh, we're gonna have a few shots, aren't we? Got some chalks and that. I've also got the giveaway winner from the last show of that natural. I've made the natural better, and I've also got another giveaway to do. The only problem is, I've got no signal on my phone, so I might have to do the giveaway when I get signal because I need to scroll through the winners and pick one. We've got the giveaway to do and another giveaway. Uh, we're just seeing if we can find one more. You fuck. There's three. He's more than enough for me. Well, some things are meant to be. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Big pile of you would. There's a fork looks decent there. There's a fork looks decent there. There's one looks decent there. I might not normally chop these forks, but because it's already all chopped down in a pile, I might as well take them. So let's see what we can find. Nice little fork. Unfortunately, there's only that one little fork in there. That, that, it looks like there was a few, but they're slightly offset and not right. But it's still one fork saved from a dead tree. It was only going to rot, wasn't it? Right, my phone has got signal, so we're going to do the giveaway. Remember that one I cut, the survival catapult? This is it, I've since took it home, sanded it to perfection, put my signature on it, rebanded it with a set of new GZK. So it's not a rough natural I've just chopped, it is the same one, but it's been done. Now thank you for everybody that entered. We had over 400 people enter the giveaway, which is brilliant. I've got all your names in here, I've scrolled up and down loads of times, so it's roughly in the middle. We're gonna keep scrolling in a minute and put my finger on one at random. So here we go, scroll, 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 up, 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 down, 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 look away, and then we have Catapult Love Your Videos, John, and it is B-R-I-J-I-D-O-A-V-I-L-E-S. Brijudu Alves or something? Well done on the giveaway, you have won it. Get in touch, we'll send it to you. Right, I just got disturbed in the middle of that giveaway by a dog walker. Uh, he's told me that up that way, there's loads of beautiful limestone faces and rocks and it's really nice, so we're heading that way next. Well done on the winner, Just. Uh, get in touch and we'll get your catapult sent out. Do you remember the other one that I chopped, that spalted for, and I said it will make a beautiful one? Well, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. The spalt in it, off. Brand new GZK bands, finished to perfection with the tips and that. We're going to give this one away, but you haven't got to say catapult this time. The word you've got to comment is subscribe. So just comment subscribe and in the next show we'll do a random giveaway and somebody will win this. So get your comments in and hit subscribe. Right, we're heading up there towards these limestone rocks and cliff faces or something. I have no idea, let's go and have a look. So uh, I'm on my way to these limestone faces or something. Uh, no idea where he means. I ain't even too sure what limestone looks like. Uh, I think this is what he means, this limestone cliff. Whatever, is that limestone? You lot tell me. Uh, I'll tell you what we did yesterday, because the weather's been beautiful now. It's uh, 14th of May. Uh, we went fishing, 
and I had the fastest carp take ever off the top. Check this out. Are you joking? Uh, drop the bread in, oh, and within that? seconds, add him. Screamer. Zzz. How many carp did we catch that day between us in that few hours? About 30. About 30. The little ones got involved, even my little lad. You know, I let him try and hold the rod and pull one in. Uh, and we had a real good time, to be fair. Within about four hours fishing, we had about 30 carp. Right, you found the stones. They're nice, actually. There's loads of big cracks in that in them. Uh, and while I'm here now, look. You, absolute you, 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 you. It's everywhere. I'd say we'll do some shooting here, but there's a lot of big cracks in that in these stones, and surely one of us is going to end up smashing our ankle if we try one here. So we're going to get some targets up somewhere and uh, see what we can do. Um, I think it's um, limestone because um, it has um, like different layers. And different layers. Sedimentary rock has different layers. Sedimentary rock. Who learnt you all this? You teach what other rocks do you know about? Igneous rocks. Igneous rock. What's that? Rocks what form from lava? Any other rocks? Metamorphic. Metamor what's a metamorphic? Um, I think it's when loads of pressure has been added. To loads it. of pressure has been added. Anything um, else? No. <laughs> okay, you can tell me what every rock is. I don't know all this. So she's a clever clogs, isn't it? And she can fish and shoot as well. She's got a countryside as well as the clever side. <laughs> right. We've come to a dead end. We've come to a dead end. Right. We're going to try and find a bit of space to go and. Uh, have a few shots, smash some chalks. Just put a chalk disc on here for Kizzy. It's blowing about a bit in the wind, you know, moving. <laughs> this is what we normally shoot, the 24 mil chalk discs. So you get them off eBay about five, six pounds for about 300. They've got a little hole in, so you can push them straight onto anything like a little stick on the tree or anything really. We just tied that one on for now. Uh, great little targets. Right, the camera is telling me to charge my battery. It's running. Absolutely gutted the battery went. We went on to smash a few chalks, swinging chalks, chalk sideways on. We cut a fair few U forks and we cut one ash fork as well. But absolutely gutted the battery died, but it is what it is. Right, I'm out again today looking for ash forks in this woodland behind me. So while I go and have a look for that woodland, here's this episode's product review. <laughs> This episode's product review, we have three products for you today. We have this laser sighted spring action arm braced aluminium catapult with some nice wooden handles. We have a band cutting jig, adjustable, and we have a new product from Wasp Catapults, and this is the Wolf. First up, we have this unit here. Now it comes flat packed in the box, it doesn't take too long to put together. You know, it's well presented, it comes with its own bag. A few Allen keys here and a few bits put there and you'll soon have it up and running and have a perfectly functional catapult. It's a great bit of kit. I do like the laser sight. Never personally used the laser sight. It's not something I would use, but it's got it on. So why not try it out? It's a good laser as well. Considering it's daytime, works really bright. I can understand the laser helping to keep your hand pointed directly on the target instead of moving it slightly like that or like that. It will help to align your catapult up. One of the features on it that I really, really, really do like are these spring loaded sides. So when you pull down this spring gear, shoot straight back up and it does give it that extra little bit of va va boom the ball does fly it come with double bands which just slot into place i personally found the bands a bit too short for my draw i could only get to about here so i undone the band set done some loop tubes and put my own pouch on and now i have a proper draw it has the arm brace give you that sturdy old on the arm brace you have these magnets which hold the balls on so you can just simply drop them off and put them down the laser is cool as I say. It almost reminds me of one of these, you know, you know the Italian style and the Spanish style where they have the big over the top ones and they pull back and they have all these sighting methods. It's like I say, you have a sight there and you also have a sight there. So when you pull back, the sight, if you can see this now, it drops straight down. And you see that sight? genius bit of um, engineering to be fair so if I was saying that the camera is now the sight when I pull it back sight drops down and there we go it's well made I believe it to be cast aluminium nice rosewood as well and overall it's a really 
nice bit of kit. Uh, it's not my style of shooter, but you've got to appreciate the work that's gone into it, the designing, the quick change bands. And it reminds me of what the Spanish use a lot. Very similar handle, you know, the low forks that fit like that. Not many people over this side of the pond shoot this type of frame. I've been shooting it after I put the bands on. Started off on the big spinner, was hitting that. Within no time, found my reference and anchor, lined it up on the target, and I was hitting the little 25mm spinner consistently. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you that really. I don't know what else to say about it. You know, puts together well. It has the connection on the bottom there for the torch, if you want to put a torch on it. And it is just, in general, really well manufactured and put together really well. You know, you can tell when you look at it, it's it's quality, it's solid, it's not all show and no go. It is actually a solid frame, very comfortable on the grip as well. It's almost like a pistol grip. I do like it, I'm not just saying it for the sake of the review, it's not something I'd personally shoot, but I really do like it. Check the link out in the description and add one to your catapult collection. Next up, we have one of Wasp's new products. This is the Wolf. I don't have to keep banging on about how good Wasp products are. Polycarbonate, everybody knows it's bomb proof. One of the best materials about. The cheap, the cheerful, and the very well made. This fork will last you many, many years, if not a lifetime. You know, it's an exceptionally strong material. It's an over the top which is that way, and a TTF shooter at the same time, depending on how you band it up. It has universal tips. It holds nice in the hand, you know, it's got a good grip, it's got a nice thumb and finger brace. Can't big boss products up enough. For the money, they're hard to beat. Exceptionally good value. And I believe this to be another fine addition to the Wasp Slingshot range. Holds the hand lovely. You got the pinky hole there to lock your finger in, your thumb and finger pads. And it just holds really, really nice. Because the forks are a bit narrower than I would prefer for TTF, I'll shoot this one over the top, sort of at a 45 degree angle. Just put the fork tip on the target. That's how I personally shoot this. It's an exceptionally comfortable design. You've got the pinky hole to lock in there and the thumb and finger brace. Grip's really nice. You get a nice lock around the waist of the frame. And uh, it's a really good product. I really like this color green as well. But uh, you know, you cannot knock a wasp product, any one of them. The polycarbonate is arguably the strongest material about for catapults. You know, you will not break this stuff. It's exceptionally strong uh, and I really, really like it. So what you have to do is get onto wasp's website, www.waspslingshot.co.uk, add one of these to your basket and get one because you won't be disappointed. The next product I want to show you for review is another product from Celtic Catapults. It's a band cutting device. It's fully adjustable can untighten it, move it up and down to the different cuts. You lock it back into place so there's no sliding once it's locked. You put it down and you cut it with your rotary cutter. It's all numbered for different measurements and different things. It'll do any taper you want. And it's really, really good for cutting your bands. It's got the Celtic Catapults website on, www.celticcatties.com. And yeah, it's another genius invention. I know I've said it on the other things, but there's the band jig now, there's the ammo dispenser, there's this, no, no, they're all great little inventions that will help somebody in some way, so be sure to check them out and all the other products on the website. Cuts your bands great, you know, it gives you a nice level line, it all locks into place, you know, you get a lovely clean cut, all your bands are exactly the same. Uh, I don't know really what else to say about it, I've basically told you everything, it's a great little tool to set to what type of band you want to cut and it cuts them great so check it out some excellent product reviews in there uh, thank you for everybody who sent me a product for review if any of you viewers would like to see a certain product reviewed pop it in the comment box below and we'll do our best to review it if you have a product of your own that you would like to see us review in episode 5 of the catapult show get in touch and if it fits the bill and suits the show we'll review it coming next we have a brand new feature which will be in every episode of the catapult show now it's called it's ambrose time if you're on facebook you'll see ambrose pulls some amazing shots off shoots through cds shoots tiny tic tacs needles he even lights matches now we've got him on board from now on in every episode of the catapult show he's gonna do a trick shot exclusively for every episode of the catapult show and here's today's a couple of shots, one on the match, then one on a cigarette lighter.
they knocked the match off and that was with the uh, GPS from the gamekeeper range. Thank you very much Ambrose, great shooting there, really good shooting, you made it look easy. I'm sure you've got some great ideas planned for the next show. Do any of you viewers have any ideas what he should do? Do you know a trick shot he could do? Pop it in the comments if you do, drop it in. Right, straight from Ambrose time, I'm going to go back over a woodland over there now, see if I can find some more forks, but for now, it's this episode's top tip. This episode's top tip is how to make a very quick, very strong catapult for next to nothing. Now this is a figure eight descender. You can find them on eBay. They range from two pound up to four pound. You get different sizes and colors and the more you buy, the cheaper they get. They are made from aluminium and they are super strong. Just to put this into perspective, most people's draw weight when shooting a catapult is, I don't know, eight pound of pressure, 10 pound, 15 pound, 20 pound in some things. If you're extremely using double treble bands and giving it your all, maybe 30 pound of pressure. This takes 7,500 pounds of pressure. So you can imagine it's more than strong enough. Agreed, the weight is pulled that way, not that way against the fork. So it will be a little bit less, but you can be sure that this is more than 20 times strong enough you will need to hold your bands. Like I said, you can see exactly where this is going. You have your pinky hole, you have your hands that wrap round and you brace it. It is as simple as it looks. You cut it off, you sand the tips and you whack some bands on it. Now to cut it off at first, I'd advise holding it, putting your hands on the catapult, marking it and allowing so you have enough room for the wrap and tuck and to fit your bands however you want. Now there's many things you can do with your bands. You can tab it or you can just do a simple wrap and tuck or you could even drill holes through it or you could you could do whatever you want basically. We're just going to do a simple wrap and tuck on this one. Please check in our how-to section if you want to know how to put leather tabs on and all that. We have it all covered for you. But in this little top tip we're just going to do a simple wrap and tuck. So you grip it, you make sure before you mark it up that you are holding it right. You allow enough room just to allow your band attachment. Then we're gonna cut it off with the Axor. Everybody's got access to an Axor, surely. If not, go and get a cheap one from the pound shop. It might not last long, but it'll be enough to make this catapult. Once you've got it cut off, the catapult is done. It just needs the tips rounding slightly and sanding. Now, I'm gonna use the Dremel just to round them off a little bit. You could go at this with some coarse sandpaper and within a few minutes you'd have it rounded off a bit. And then it's as simple as this, wrap and tuck your bands on. In this case I'm using 30 to 20 mil single ferroband gold. In my opinion one of the best band sets out, it's consistent, it lasts decent and it hunts whatever you want to want. If you hit it in the head it will kill and it's still winning trophies in 2019. So 30 to 20 is my go-to Ferroban Gold band set. And that's it, the catapult is done. So we've turned this little thing here, which was a climbing clip, into a fully functional solid catapult with minimal work. And it only takes a couple of minutes to do. That is this episode's top tip. Get to it, check it out. There's slightly different shapes, different sizes, different colors. It's a great little thing to have in your catapult arsenal excellent top tip there and you know it takes minutes to make one and they cost pretty much pennies a couple of quid each i've since ordered me a few different colors and i'm going to make a few i'll keep one in the car i'll keep one in my fishing box and you know they're just the solid heavy duty hardware and things and you ain't going to break one and they're comfortable as well right we're going straight on to the up and coming catapult tournaments now. The ESF have got a huge event on the 20th and the 21st of July. There's so much going on, so who better to tell us all about it than ESF founder and committee member, Keith Dighton. Thanks John, so hi guys, my name is Keith Dighton. I'm part of the England Slingshot Federation Committee. As John just said, we're having an absolutely huge event in July, July 20th and 21st. Put those dates in your diary. Uh, Sully Hole is the place, is the venue. It's the biggest and best catapult hunting simulation course on the planet. This year, it's nearly doubled in size. You've got over 50 targets at different heights, different distances, different sizes. Um, it'll take the whole day to go around and 
and it's an absolute pleasure to walk around. Nice private woodland, you'll be, you'll be taking shots up trees, through woodland, through scrub, over water. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got different categories. We've got juniors categories for all the events, women's categories. We've got men's categories, pro categories, novice categories. So the whole family can take part and everyone's got a good chance of winning silverware. Saturday will be the hunter's course. Camping is included uh, in your entry. Uh, Sunday, we will also have four events running. We've got a jumbo 10 meter challenge. We've got a 12 meter PFS challenge. We've got a 12 meter classic challenge, which is a natural competition. And also we've got a new competition called Killer, which involves a cash prize. So make sure you're there. It's an absolutely brilliant weekend with some really nice people there. If you've not been to a shoot before, uh, or you know you want to get involved in any events, this is the one to go to. It's a nice and relaxed atmosphere. And uh, yeah, hope to see you there. If you need any more information, just go on Facebook and type in at England Slingshot Federation, all one word. All our information is on there. And uh, yeah, be good to see you all there. Cheers. I'll second everything Keith said there. The Hunter's course at the Solihull shoot is amazing. It's probably the most prestige title in catapults, the best event, the most targets. It takes all day to do it. If you win that, then you know what you're doing. So hopefully you'll all be at the Solihull shoot. I'll be there and it's going to be epic. Next up, there's a shoot in Andover, Hampshire from the 9th to the 11th of August. It's been took over, this one, by Mr. Slingshot World himself, Adam Rayner. There's all sorts going on. I'm even doing my own challenge there, the Gamekeeper Challenge, supplying trophies and prizes. But that's enough me telling you about it. Let's get it straight from the horse's mouth. Here's Mr. Slingshot World himself, Adam Rayner, to tell you exactly what's going on at Andover. Hello, Adam Rayner, Slingshot World magazine, as found on Mounted and Stuff TV on YouTube. I'm here to tell you about the Andover shoot, which this year has been taken over by the magazine. The ESF have got some serious stuff going on. Haven't quite got the headspace for this one. This is now going to be just a fun social. We do have some reasons to be there to shoot, though. We've got Gamekeeper John running the Gamekeeper Challenge, which is uh, three shots each at 10, 15, and then 20 metres. We've got an all-weekend cash pot, 100% to the winner who gets the most um, shots on the uh, single spinner. We've got uh, David Brazil's Classics Contest, first, second, third. On the Saturday, there'll be two hours between three and five o'clock to uh, hit the resettable. There's five to basically knock them all down and stand them all back up again and then on the uh, Sunday there'll be a finals a little bit after the one when Gamekeeper John does his we've got clubs we've got a whole bunch of space the pub is now open again I can tell you that it's uh, going to be one fun relaxing weekend so do please come along check out Slingshot World Co UK or Slingshot World magazine page on uh, Facebook of course and uh, magazines all still very much on sale thanks ever so much Thank you very much for that, Adam. I am really, really looking forward to Andover this year. You know, it's been going around for so long, that shoot, and, you know, it's made my day that you have kept it going and not let it slip away. So, Mr. Slingshot World himself, Adam Rayner, will be running the Andover shoot, and I hope to see you all there. Coming up within the next show or two, we have some huge news. We've been working on a new product now for... Well, it's been a couple of months, if not more now. There's lots of work going on, and it's going to be absolutely massive, this product. I'm not going to say much more on it yet. It might be in the next show. It might be the show after it. It might even take a bit longer. But it's going to be one of the biggest things in catapults in 2019, and I can promise you that. So be sure to subscribe and get ready for all the future shows, because you do not want to miss this new product that we have coming. We also have massive plans for the catapult show. As you can see, we dropped a new feature in this time called It's Ambrose Time. And every show, Ambrose will be pulling off a shot. And believe me, he can pull some brilliant shots off. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. We have plans for new features and new features, but we don't know how many to go on. The show will be an hour long before we know it. So we need to establish what features people like and don't like. So if you've got any input, criticism, you know, I'll take it all on the chin. On the chin, as you could say. <laughs> so if you've got anything you'd like to tell us about the show, what features you do like and what you don't, just drop it in the comments below. It's all good feedback. I'm pretty much still learning with this entire show editing. I only started it a few months ago. We're only on episode four. I don't think you'll see the full potential of the show until maybe next year. So we have new cameras coming. We've got some new features we got planned. We have 
you know, it's going to be better content, clearer content than we've already had, and everybody says it's brilliant now. The views the shows are getting, 30,000, 40,000 views within the first few months, absolutely brilliant. Our subscriber count is going zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz